What's going on everyone, Bender here with another Best Settings tutorial. This tutorial we're going to be covering the PS1 emulator, EPSXE. Specifically we're going to be covering 2.0.5 but that shouldn't really make too much of a difference. Now the only plugins we are really going to be covering in this video is going to be video. And that's because sound and CD-ROM are more preference than performance hindering. First, we're gonna, so let's go into video. And as you can see, I already have some settings. And why I like EPSXE is specifically the PEAT GL2 Core plugin. If you don't know how to switch your plugins, you just go to Config, Plugins, Video, and switch to PEAT's OpenGL2 GPU Core 2.0.0. Then click OK, then go back into video. Now why I like this specific plugin is it has default for both fast and nice. Nice will obviously make the game look nicer at the cost of some performance. And at the end of the video, I will provide some FPS benchmarks between the default settings and our own customized settings. Now let's start off on fast and see what the default is. First off, these are preference. I recommend switching color depth to 32 bit and window in full screen mode are purely up to your own preference. In window, I like to go 1280 by 720. Internal X and Y resolution. What these are is these controls the fidelity of the graphics. We have low, which is the native PSX re resolution. We have one, which is very high standard enhanced display. And as you see, two very high needs a modern card. Otherwise crashes are possible. And what these basically do is I have an image up ready. Let me just bring it over. As you can see, it might be difficult to tell because of the recording, but if you look at this edge of this little center block right here, you can see some kind of steps within uh, the edge of this model. If we go over here, this is when it's set on one. As you can see, there's a lot less steps and it looks much smoother. And it is also p possible to tell right here. You can see these little steps going down and over here, they're much smaller, giving it a higher fidelity. The left, was low and the right one was high. Very high can be assumed to do the same thing and provide even more fidelity to the models. I recommend either high or very high. Um, specifically high will work just fine because even on fast it sets it to high. Whoops. So this shouldn't cause too much of a performance hinder, but again, I will be providing FPS benchmarks at the end of the video. Stretching mode shouldn't have any effect on your frames. Um, it's basically just how it's going to scale the video of uh, the emulator to its window size. Um, stretch is probably about the best you want to go for. It doesn't cause too much ugly tearing and whatnot. Render mode, you want to keep this on render to P buffer texture. Um, render mode won't. This is more of a per graphics card situation. If you're having issues and stuttering on certain graphics cards, switching this may have some changes uh, as you see right here it says render to p buffer copy to texture is supported by most cards and now for old cards though it says use frame buffer object is the fastest mode again if it's supported by your graphics card safest is just to leave it on render to p buffer texture otherwise if you know some of these other settings are compatible with your graphics card which it's a high possibility if you have a modern graphics card that they are um, otherwise just leave it on the zero setting and threading mode. Um, you can change this up. Um, one, 
the 0 and 1 option tend to have better FPS effects. Um, 2 and 3 tend to have a little more of a uh, hit on your frames, but it shouldn't be too much if you have a CPU that can handle it. If you don't have that good of a CPU or a graphics card, I'd recommend leaving this on 0 or 1. Texture filtering is just how the textures look. Um, it just modifies them, it shouldn't affect performance whatsoever. Leave graphics card VRAM on auto detect. High res textures, um, this can have a, a performance hit, um, unless you really know that your computer can handle it, I would leave it at zero. Otherwise, you can set it to something like two times SAL. Frame rate in the frame rate options, um, these are pretty much preference. Um, using an FPS limit can actually hinder some performance since it has to throttle FPS if you go above uh, certain limits and whatnot. Um, this just, like it says, shows FPS display. Um, this is all pretty much preference. Um, I generally have used FPS limit off because it provides slightly better performance, but only very slightly. Now compatibility, off-screen drawing. I would leave this on zero. This makes, this basically keeps any polygons that are off screen from rendering, which heavily increases performance. Anything else is really just gonna hurt the performance because it's gonna be rendering any polygons that aren't even on the screen. Um, you may notice a bit of popping though with zero, but again, it does increase performance. So you get more frames with this on zero. Frame buffer effects and upload, I would leave these at standard. This shouldn't hurt your FPS too hard and it helps make the game look a tiny bit better. Screen filtering is also a per preference thing, it shouldn't have too much of an effect on your frames. And under the miscellaneous settings, the only things that would really have any effect on performance is going to be the MDEC filter, which as it says, movies will look less pixelated. If you turn it on, movies will look less pixelated, but at the cost of some performance during said cutscenes. And that is going to be it for the settings. Again, I will be providing some benchmarks with all these settings. And I will see you guys in my next video. As one last note, I need to mention that because I have a somewhat decent graphics card, you're not going to see too big of differences within these benchmarks. But you can see that there is some increase in the average FPS.